Welcome to farming in the 21st century. Whether we like it or not, working the land is no longer just about the weather, foreign exchange rates and the race for production. The farming environment is changing and rapidly. The world's resources are coming under increasing pressure. Fuel reserves are dwindling. Even the fresh water that we once took for granted is now precious and a tradable commodity. We can no longer view the earth as a limitless resource to do with as we please. The new driver of every business and every product must be sustainability. If you were asked, what is your most valuable resource, what would you say? There is of course only one answer, the land. The reality is, all life begins with the soil. For over 30 years, Quantum Laboratories has been helping people of the land to better understand the relationship between the ground under their feet and the money in their pocket. My name is Peter Lester. I'm the founder and co-director of Quantum Laboratories. I was operations manager for a crop dusting firm in the 1960s and found that farmers were actually guessing what they're putting on. The farmers and the fertiliser company were walking hand in hand down the wrong road. They had limited understanding of soil science and they were doing what they were doing just because it was a habit. Determined to do something about it, I spent six years studying in America and came back in 1975 and founded Quantum Laboratories, the first in the field of coordinated soil, plant and animal nutrition. I introduced this philosophy to New Zealand. Well, I'm a co-director in Quantum Laboratories. Previous to that I'd had 30 years experience in the sheep and beef industry. Uh, studied at Massey University gaining a diploma in agriculture in the mid 80s and then in 1990 we converted our sheep and beef farm in the King Country to dairying. I purchased the property next door and we extended our dairy operation further building up to about 520 cows, 520 to 560 cows. I'm excited about being here. I've been in the livestock business for more than 50 years. I've been at it from all directions. I was a veterinarian for 30 years. I have an understanding of how farmers think. And I'm wanting to tell you that our farmers today, we have some answers for you that will work. And I realised that the farmers were guessing what they were putting on. There was no science behind it. They merely put on what the fertiliser industry wanted to sell them. And I realised there had to be a coordinated approach. I wouldn't be here now if I hadn't tried the quantum approach on my own farm first. That's why I know we can add value to your business working with you from the ground up. Good production is a reflection of high soil fertility, not plant pedigree. This is the plant's stomach. It has no digestive system. The amount of biology that we can hold in here is going to dictate the health of the plant. This is in fact the plant's rumen, just like a ruminating animal in a cow. If you have a dead rumen, you have a dead cow. You don't make any money. If you have a dead soil, you have a dead plant and a dead cow. You're not making any money. What we do with this is going to dictate the health of the whole nation. To understand what is happening in your soil, first you must understand the relationship between the carbon and nitrogen cycles. The engine room of the soil starts with carbon and nitrogen. Both of these elements are crucial to all life forms. They occur in separate but closely linked cycles. Air contains 79% nitrogen. Soil in its optimum state contains 25% air and that air also contains 79% nitrogen. Organic content in a fertile soil may be hundreds of tonnes per hectare. For example, a soil that has 5% organic matter equals 1,000 tonnes per hectare. A significant proportion of this will be nitrogen. So nitrogen is already present in the soil, but not in a form plants can use. It can only be made available by biological activity. This activity decomposes organic matter, freeing the nitrogen and making it available to the plants. Carbon dioxide is also present in minute quantities in the atmosphere. It is absorbed directly by plants in a process known as photosynthesis. Carbon ends up in the soil as plant and animal material decomposes. 
So these natural cycles allow carbon and nitrogen to be extracted from the atmosphere to form soil and grow plant material. The two cycles are dependent on each other. Now let's look at how these two cycles work together. Follow the blue lines on the left. You will see that nitrogen is deposited in the soil, either through fertiliser or by absorption from the atmosphere. In the soil, it undergoes changes to make it plant available. A certain amount will be lost through leaching. Now carbon, shown in the red cycle, can only be deposited in the soil through organic matter, either through natural decay of plants or the manure of ruminating animals. This organic matter is converted by microbiological activity to once again make it plant available. Some carbon will also be lost through leaching or returned to the atmosphere in a gaseous form. The common bond for both cycles is the biological activity which takes place. This creates what we call the soup of the soil, from which plants draw their nutrients. This is the rumen of the plant, the living soil in action. So that's the first key to a healthy soil. And remember, the copious amounts of nitrogen that are in your soil are free and available for you to tap into. Now we understand carbon and nitrogen, let's look at the function of some of the other elements. To grow plants and animals, we must begin with the cell. There are 17 elements critical to the cell formation in all living things. Every one of these elements plays a vital role and a shortfall in any one will result in a health or production deficiency. For instance, a shortage of magnesium will result in a chlorophyll deficiency. The soil is the primary source of essential elements, therefore our approach must begin from the ground up. Let's start with the four free elements. In addition to nitrogen and carbon, there are two further free elements, oxygen and hydrogen. Carbon, hydrogen and oxygen are the elements in carbohydrates or energy food. Think of it as go power. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen are the elements in protein or grow power. All animals need a balance of these foods to remain healthy and productive. Phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, potassium and sodium are known as the five major elements. These are required in significant quantities and play an essential role in such things as the development of blood, bone and the control of metabolism. Then we have nine elements referred to as minor or trace elements. Boron, iron, manganese, copper, zinc, selenium, molybdenum, cobalt and nickel. These are known as minor because very small amounts of these are needed, but they are just as vital to the soil, plant and animal health. Each plant species will require a different ratio of essential elements for optimum growth. Often the element status must be adjusted to maximise the crop you grow. Animals have specific requirements. For example, healthy bones and teeth need one part phosphorus, 1.5 calcium, 0.75 magnesium, 0.5 sodium and 3 parts potassium. Now here's the crucial factor in establishing a balanced soil. It is possible to have all 17 elements present and still have soils with low productivity. This is because all the elements interact and are dependent upon each other in order to set the soil biology in motion. If there is a problem, it's often because the ratios are imbalanced. When minerals are locked up like this, the only solution is to correct the imbalance by adjusting the ratios. Now that we've talked about the function of the soil, we're going to talk about fertilisers and their effect on soil, plant and animal health. Farmers have always been aware of the importance of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and sulphur. Traditional fertiliser programs have focused almost exclusively on just these four elements and the use of lime as a pH buffer. 
This is known as the quantity theory, and very obviously this theory has flaws. Other elements will not be replaced as they are mined from the soil or suppressed. The ratio approach favoured by quantum is more comprehensive and recognises the importance of other elements in a healthy, life-giving soil. As well as nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and sulphur, quantum tests for an additional eight elements. These may then be included in a customised fertiliser blend, ensuring a balanced mineral uptake. We call it thinking outside the square. You must understand that pH is not the objective of your fertiliser program. The main objective is to balance the soil nutrients within your soil in order to optimise production systems. pH will balance itself as you get the nutrient status in the right order. Most people know pH as a measure of soil acidity or alkalinity. But pH is actually a measure of the hydrogen concentration only. When elements are removed and not replaced, hydrogen will automatically fill the gap. Most commercial crops grow in the range 4.8 to 7.5. Higher producing plants such as lucerne or prairie grass require a higher element content, whereas less desirable species such as Yorkshire fog and brown top will grow in lower element soils. This is why you may struggle to establish ryegrass in a brown top predominant pasture without adjusting the mineral ratios. As you can see by this graph, as the pH increases, dry matter production will also increase. This is not solely due to an increase in pH, but to all factors that influence pH. Increased carbon and nitrogen cycles, increased mineral uptake, and better pasture composition. Better pasture species will also produce a more balanced feed profile with less spikes and dips in overall production. pH is not a measure of soil fertility. You can have a high pH in your soil and yet all the elements may be out of balance and the crops may wither and die. This is why liming to decrease acidity and raise pH is often ineffective. You're not addressing the problem but the symptom. Some simple indicators of a sick soil are pasture pulling, pastures opening up, poor producing species such as brown top, increased weed infestation, disappearance of clovers, parasite infestation in plants, lame stock, downer cows, poor weight gains in stock, livestock deficiencies in minerals such as copper, selenium, iodine, cobalt, fly strike, prolapse, facial eczema, mastitis, parasite infestation in animals, and reproduction problems. We were having a lot of trouble with the, the young animals. In fact, we got one age group that um, we lost a very high percentage of because of um, mineral deficiencies. I had major problems with my sheep taking grass, staggers, sleepy sickness and such like. We had problems with fly strike, Californian thistles and grass staggers in our cows. What we do at Quantum Laboratories is we say we'll start at the soil and we'll build your production system starting from the soil, moving through to plant produ production, up into animal production. We apply the essential elements to the soil, all of the essential elements in the correct balance and the correct ratios to main maintain healthy soils, healthy plants and healthy animals. We see that once the animal health improves, it's actually the first thing you always see when you come on board with us and start applying a more rounded fertiliser program, animal health will improve out of sight. Changing to a multi-blend fertiliser means less money spent on medicines and drenches, less money spent on regrassing and more money in your pocket.
if these problems are raising questions on your farm, we've got some answers for you. You see, when a balanced soil, plant and animal strategy is in place, problems caused by imbalance simply dissolve. Let us look at some of these issues to find out why they occur. Facial eczema, or photosensitivity, is caused by a breakdown in the animal's defences because of liver damage. You see, the liver is the animal's major detoxifying organ. The liver is protected by the cell wall. Now, the animal requires a continual source of vitamins A, D and E to maintain the health of the cell wall. Normally, the animal obtains vitamin A by the conversion of carotene. Carotene is a substance found in all green leafy plants, as well as vegetables such as carrots, from which the name carotene is derived. In times of drought, little or no carotene is available. The animal mobilizes its vitamin A reserves, and with no further source of the vitamin, the liver cells are unprotected and open to invasion by any pathogen. Poor levels of carotene can also be found in plentiful but low quality feed. And problems can also arise post-drought, when rapidly growing grass has high and partially developed proteins. Under these conditions, carotene may be present, but the animal's conversion to vitamin A is compromised. The result is that bile pigment in the animal and chlorophyll from the plant cannot be processed by the damaged liver. They are released into the bloodstream and react with sunlight, giving the graphic symptoms of facial eczema or photosensitivity. Sodium, calcium and potassium work together to regulate muscle control. When these three elements are out of balance, the muscle is relaxed and the uterus or rectum pops out under strain. In extreme cases, too much potassium will result in heart failure. Let's look at the results of a feed report analysed at Quantum Laboratories. The ratio of these two highlighted elements is critical. This should be a ratio of one calcium to two of potassium. But as we see here, it has blown out to one to 17 ratio. Animals on this feed are very likely to suffer prolapse and or chronic heart failure. Remember, a high level of potassium in a feed test does not necessarily reflect the potassium in the soil. It is more likely that the elements are out of balance. Adjust the ratio in the soil and the level of potassium in the plant will fall. Here is a feed profile showing a typical spring or autumn grass flush. As you can see, the highlighted crude protein is 31%. The ideal range for the animal is 10 to 15%. The total digestible nutrient, that is the potential energy value, is 61%, but it should be over 68%. This feed is short of energy. Now the animal will attempt to convert the protein to energy to meet the shortage. As a result, it becomes deficient in both energy and protein. In the process, it produces extra ammonia and methane, which must be expelled. The excessive urine patches will also increase nitrate levels in the soil. Here again, calcium and potassium are not in balance. As a result, the valve sphincter muscle is relaxed. The milk canal remains open, allowing bacteria to invade the udder. Milk is really just modified blood, so it is a perfect environment for microbe infection. When soil nutrients are not in balance, plants may produce partially developed proteins, known as non-protein nitrogen. These NPNs affect the first stage of digestion by forming gases and soap-like substances. This produces a distended stomach, which we all know as bloat. You can buy substitute compounds known as bypass proteins or treat with antibiotics, which suppress the effects of the bacteria. These measures are only short-term solutions. They don't address the root cause of the problem. Predators, such as flies, are opportunists. Their first choice of victim is the sick and the weak. 
In the case of fly strike, often the animal has run out of essential minerals or vitamins, or the protein energy ratios are out of balance. Under stress, the animal has difficulty mobilizing its body reserves. As a result, it produces non-protein nitrogen compounds and partly decomposed fatty acids. The fly senses the animal is stressed and a perfect place to lay its eggs. In nature, nitrogen, or N, is freely available to the plant through a biological cycle. You need to set that free nitrogen to work on your farm. The use of urea to provide N has become standard practice on most New Zealand farms, promoted as an answer to many questions. Ask a consultant what to do, and his first response will be, put on more urea. The real question is, are you prepared to lose your land in the process? Let's look a little closer at the real cost of urea. This is the first unforeseen cost. You see, when you combine urea with water, you produce carbon dioxide and ammonia. The water disappears and your soils dry up in the conversion process. Second cost. The ammonia, NH3, is then converted by bacteria first to nitrite, NO2, then to nitrate, NO3. In this process, excess hydrogen is released, lowering the pH and acidifying your soil. Third cost. When urea is applied to wet soils, the resulting formation of hydrogen peroxide dissolves the humus and kills the biology essential to the life of your soil. Fourth cost. The plant grows, but what appears to be extra dry matter is in fact due to elongated plant cells. That extra growth is predominantly extra water, and the plant has increased mass at the expense of nutritional value. Makes sobering reading, doesn't it? And yet urea continues to be used with no heed to the poisoning of our land, our resource and our livelihood. Maybe it's time you asked yourself these questions. If we continue misusing fertiliser and our soils, the future is bleak. We'll see extended droughts and the destruction of the soil's life-giving humus. The soil will lose its ability to retain moisture, so there will be less evaporation, less condensation, less cloud formation and less rain. The oceans, not the land, will become the primary source of water. When the rain does come, the dry atmosphere will cause massive monsoons and storms, creating further soil destruction. The hostile environment will now sustain only climatic crops and will continually need to be re -sown. The outlook is far from certain. The future of our soils, and indeed the future of farming, will be decided now by people with vision, by people of understanding, by people who see that there is a better way to a sustainable future. After 40 years, I'm still as passionate about this subject as I ever was. I'm trying to get you, the farmer, back into the driver's seat. And that's exactly what Quantum has done for their many clients throughout New Zealand, as well as the Pacific Islands, Australia and America. Stay with us and we'll outline just what Quantum can do to restore health to your soils, plants and animals and put you back in control of your land and your business. We were having some animal health issues on another block and um, 
through Peter Lester's dealings with the the Lake Care Group. Um, we met him, and uh, and very much liked the way he was talking about the the balancing of the soil and healthy soils, healthy um, grass and feed leads to healthy animals. They're holding their condition through the rut a lot better than they have in the past. So each year the, um, the two-year-old antler growth has been getting better and better. I went back over.